Hello there, my fellow notebook aficionados, and welcome once more from Computex happening right now in Taipei. Intel seems to be hellbent on raining on Qualcomm's parade, and they invited us for a very intense deep dive session before the actual start of the show, shining some light on their upcoming Lunar Lake architecture that is coming to market within the next few months, and has its sights set not only on the new Snapdragon powered notebooks, but also Apple's super portable options. While efficiency was already a very big topic with last year's Meteor Lake launch, the new silicon was built from the ground up with entirely new cores a new architecture and a complete overhaul of everything that requires power in a notebook's SoC to deliver a super portable on-the-go notebook experience that is vastly different from what we have seen on x86 before. And while pretty much everything is theoretical at this point, what they showed us during the past few days, well, it's going to be a very interesting second half of 2024. As a disclaimer before we dive into it, as I said before, Team Blue invited us to their Intel Tech Tour conference and did pay for our flights and our hotel while hosting us for two days. No additional money exchange hands and they had no influence whatsoever on the contents of our video, nor did they see it before you guys. And with those formalities out of the way, let's talk about Lunar Lake. At its core, the new architecture is made for thin and light devices. So maybe think about a MacBook Air, Dell XPS 13, Lenovo Yoga, Asus Swift Go or Asus ZenBook to have a rough idea in mind. So the main goal, overarching the development of the new chip, was efficiency front and center. It's basically Intel's proof of concept that efficiency is not a question of x86 versus ARM, but rather of the chip's physical design. So with the new architecture, we will get an 8-core chip once more in a hybrid design, with 4 performance cores and 4 efficiency cores, paired with a new NPU that is supposedly about 4 times faster than its Meteor Lake counterpart. This will be paired with Intel's next-gen Arc GPU, which will have an equally impressive 50% performance uplift compared to what we have seen on last year's Silicon. And folks, once again, this is pretty much all theoretical at this point, since we are still a few months out to actually getting our hands on final devices. So please keep that in mind for the rest of the video. In addition to the chip itself, the package will also be combined with the system memory, which reduces the motherboard's complexity in future notebooks and physically moves the RAM closer to the CPU, which again reduces power consumption. All upcoming Lunar Lake notebooks will be equipped with either 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, with up to a whopping 8.5 giga transfers a second. As I mentioned already, the overall core and thread count will be reduced quite significantly compared to Team Blue's previous architecture. So how do they plan to still offer a competitive performance experience in addition to any efficiency gains? Well, the secret sauce here is completely new cores. For the performance variants, codenamed Lion Cove, that means a completely new design, with an up to 14% IPC or instructions per clock performance improvement and even higher computing gains at lower power. Aside from these four cores doing the heavy lifting, should it be required, a set of all new e-cores is supposed to take over everything, from more general computing requirements, like surfing the web, to lightly threaded productivity work, to near idle things like watching a movie locally on your machine. So they supposedly compensate for the missing hyper-threading capabilities of the p-cores by being much more performant than before. And at the same time, they are even more efficient at the low end. So the low power islands, like we saw on Meteor Lake chips, is apparently not needed anymore. According to Intel's slides, the new e-cores can even outperform their bigger brothers at lower wattages, which should further increase the overall efficiency of the whole package, since everything starts with the smaller cores and only if a certain workload really, really needs more power do the p-cores come into play. And as before with the low power island, certain tiles on the silicon can be switched off and operate independently from each other so only what is really needed to actually get work done consumes any energy. Taking over that task is Intel's new thread detector that works in close collaboration with the OS to assign or contain tasks in either the efficiency cores or move things over to the P cores once more computing grunt is required. On the GPU side, there will only be one configuration of 8 2nd gen XE2 cores with architectural improvements across the board, leading to the performance uplift mentioned before. Compared to the 7-core variant in Meteor Lake U, for example, we either get higher performance at the same power draw or much lower wattage requirements when aiming for the same performance. Whereas the pure GPU grunt adds up to 50% overall from what we have seen from the 8-core ArcEye GPU in the mainstream Meteor Lake CPUs. 
Once more, it's not just the architecture itself that improves both performance and efficiency, but it's the whole system with added support for new and more efficient codecs by the integrated media engine and updated display connections. This should have you covered for everything from watching videos to playing games with improved XESS upscaling and updated ray tracing cores to general compute productivity. Speaking of productivity, I do not think we can talk about anything in 2024 without at least touching up on AI. To have your new Fin and Light notebook ready for whatever use cases and for everything Windows itself has in store with Copilot, the NPU in Luna Lake gets a pretty impressive 4x overall performance boost, which translates to an equally impressive 2x gain at the same power draw than in the Meteor Lake predecessor. All of this combined with the CPU and Arc iGPU delivers up to 120 tops, which defines the theoretical processing capabilities. And in addition with Intel's widespread software support when it comes to AI models and applications, might give them the edge over the competition from both Qualcomm and Team Red, who also just announced their new mobile lineup for the second half of 2024. So what else? <laughs> Right, you need to connect stuff to your shiny new notebook, so the platform of course features the latest and greatest with a guaranteed two Thunderbolt 4 ports in every device, the three in total being supported by the chipset, Wi-Fi 7 across the board and Bluetooth 5.4 right on the package itself. Alright folks, so this is Intel's new Luna Lake platform and by the way, this was just a very general overview and if you really want to get into the nitty gritty details for every single part of the new architecture, we are working on a corresponding article on the website and I will link it in the video description so please make sure to check it out. So what do we think about what Intel has in store for us? Well, again, this is all just theoretical for now. While we did see a few demos running on either upcoming Lunar Lake notebooks or Intel's very own just announced dev kit, it is still way too early to paint an accurate picture, but it does give us an idea of what to expect. And after years of brute forcing Cinebench scores with complete disregard to power draw, it is definitely refreshing to see a chip that was designed from the ground up with efficiency in mind, which may lead to quite or even silent on-the-go computing with all-day battery life while still delivering a competitive performance experience. So maybe x86 or the PC as we know it today is not that after all. But these folks, I'm very curious to hear what you have to say. Sound off in the comments below. This should also be it from my end today. As always, hit that like and sub button on your way out and check back in the coming days for more Computex coverage. Thanks a ton for watching, my name is Alex and I see you all in the next one. Take care.